to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss about another crash gun drug which is Atropin. Atropin is an anticholinergic agent and it is used in uh, various departments uh, in the medical practice. Uh, more commonly it is used as a mitriatic agent in the ophthalmologic practice. So it can be, uh, it, it is, Atropin is available as an eye drop or an ailment so that it can cause pharmacological dilatation and in the ED Atropin is used as an anti-secretory agent because uh, since atropin is an anticholinergic, it can reduce the secretion. So it is used as an anti-secretory agent and atropin can also be used uh, in other uh, serious conditions. So the main indications of atropin will come in symptomatic bradycardia and in case of OP poisoning or in case of carbamate poisoning and mushroom poisoning. So how is atropin available? So atropin can either be available as an ampule or a vial. So if it is available as an ampule, it each uh, an, uh, one ampule will contain one ml of atropin, and uh, it can either be available as one ml is equal to one mg of atropin or one ml is equal to 0.6 mg of atropin. So what I have is here is one ml is equal to 0.6 mg of atropin, or otherwise we will get atropin as a vial. So it will be available as a 20 ml vial and each 20 ml will contain 8 mg of atropin. So uh, that is how it is available. So we will be mostly discussing about the ER uses of atropin. So I told it is used in symptomatic bradycardia. So uh, I, uh, since atropin is an anticholinergic agent that means it will inhibit the parasympathetic system so that there will be an excessive sympathetic activity. So it will increase the heart rate. Uh, that's how it is used in symptomatic bradycardia. Mm -hmm. What is symptomatic bradycardia? That means a patient with bradycardia who is having, who is unstable. That means the patient might be having any signs of shock, patient might be in hypotension, patient might be having chest pain, there can be features of altered sensorium or the patient might be in cardiac failure. So in these conditions, that means the patient is in unstable bradycardia. In this condition, we will have to give the uh, patient with atropin. So atropin is a first line agent in symptomatic bradycardia and if at all this patient doesn't improve with maximum dose of atropin, which can be given to the patient, then we will have to think about giving uh, dopamine or adrenaline infusion uh, or uh, pay, uh, cardiac pacing should be done. So uh, the dose of atropin in symptomatic bradycardia or usually uh, we give 0.5 to 1 mg of atropin. We will be giving it as a start dose and we will be repeating it every 3 minutes, 3 to 5 minutes to a maximum 3 mg. So now AHA tells that in case of symptomatic bradycardia we should give directly 1 mg. So 1 mg we will be giving at a stat dose and we will be repeating every 3 to 5 minutes to a maximum dose of 3 mg. And in children, atropin uh, is used in bradycardia. Uh, before intubation, we will have to load and keep atropin because um, uh, for children, there is a high chance of hypoxia, hypoxia leading into a bradycardia. So, uh, in children, we will have to keep the atropin ready prior to intubation. And in symptomatic bradycardia also, we will have to um, give the child with an atropin. So, the dose of atropin in children is 0 0.02 mg per kg. So, depending on the weight, we will have to calculate the atropin dose and we will have to keep the atropin ready. And uh, this dose is actually an IV or an uh, IM or intraosseous uh, dose. Uh, if at all we don't have an IV line or an uh, IO axis, then we will have to give it through an endotracheal tube. So if we are giving uh, through an ET tube, we will have to give at least thrice the dose of atropin, uh, which is required. Okay. So uh, uh, in adult and in children, we told uh, adult doses 0.5 to 1 mg. We will be repeating every 3 to 5 minutes, maximum 3 mg we will be giving. And children, the dose is 0 0.02 to mg per kg. Okay. And uh, atropin can also be used as an anti-secretory agent uh, in, uh, before intubation or in anesthesia procedures and all. It is used as an anti-secretory agent. We can use, uh, we can give 0.5 to 1 mg and uh, we can repeat it every 4 to 6 hourly. Then comes the role of atropin in OP poisoning. In OP poisoning, uh, we know that in OP poisoning, the patient will be having diarrhea, excessive secretion, bronchorrhea will be there. So our aim is to dry up the secretion and the inhibit the cholinergic action. So uh, it is used as an anticholinergic in 
OP poisoning. So in OP poisoning, uh, atropin is given as 1 to 2 mg will be given as stat dose and every 5 to 15 minutes we will be mm, monitoring the patient and every 5 to 15 minutes we will be repeating that 1 to 2 mg of atropin again and again till the chest becomes clear because of the bronchorrhea and excessive um, secretions there uh, the chest will be wet. So till the patient's chest becomes dry we will have to give atropin. And uh, atropin is not a contraindication in case of OP poisoning with tachycardia. Okay, so we uh, monitor the patient with cardiac monitor, monitor that patient is not going into an arrhythmia, but we will have to give atropin to clear the secretions. Till the chest becomes clear, we will have to repeat the dose of atropin. And once the chest becomes clear, we will have to calculate the total dose of atropin which was required for this patient. And 20% of that should be started as an atropin infusion. So, um, that is how, that is the role of atropin in OP poisoning. Now, uh, we'll uh, discuss about the side effects. Before talking about the side effects, uh, note that if, this patient, if the patient, if you are planning to give for symptomatic bradycardia, if the patient is a post-cardiac transplant patient, uh, the, all the vagus and everything will be cut. So, in these patients, if this if the post-transplant, heart transplant patient comes with a symptomatic bradycardia, this atropin will not act in this patient because there is no vagal, uh, uh, vagal uh, response to uh, this patients. Okay, now we'll talk about the side effects of atropin. So common side effect of atropin is there can be hypersensitivity uh, reactions can be there. There can be erythema of the skin redness can be there. Then other uh, side effect is uh, since it's an anti-secretory uh, drug that can reduce the sweat. So the patient will be dry, there will not be much sweat will be there and because of that this patient might have hyperthermia. Then sometimes this hyperthermia get complicated into a mal uh, something like a malignant hyperthermia. Patient might be uh, having a very high spiking fever will be there. That all should be uh, managed. That that need to be managed and sometimes this patient might go into rhabdomyolysis and also the patient will be having dryness of secretions and also hyperthermia will be there. And then other complications are since uh, atropin is anticholinergic it will uh, have the action on the bowel and the bladder so there will be urine retention and there will be constipation and paralytic ileus everything will be there so in such patients um, if it is an elderly male and male adult we should catheterize this patient otherwise the patient will be having urinary retention then if we are giving atropin in case of chronic lung diseases that can cause uh, uh, chronic lung diseases which um, these uh, mucus secretions uh, everything will get dried up and that can cause dangerous plaques can be formed and if this if atropin is used in case of my patients with myasthenia that patients might go into a myasthenic crisis because of the anticholinergic effect of the atropin so uh, these are the uh, complications and in case of uh, patients with glaucoma uh, that can precipitate a glaucoma also because of the vitreatic effect, effect of the atropin uh, then the other uh, cross side effects or the serious side effects of atropin is in the cardiovascular systems uh, since we told it is used in bradycardia the side effect is tachycardia so that tachycardia can cause an atrial fibrillation or an mi uh, can be there so and it can cause dangerous arrhythmias also so uh, these are the complications in the cardiovascular system and in case of uh, central nervous system um, the atropin can well uh, cross the uh, blood brain barrier, barrier and it can cause uh, complications like irritability confusion can be there uh, it can cause some myoclonus uh, like activity can be there uh, patient might be very agitated restless and all and even patient can develop a seizure so these are the uh, central nervous system complications. So uh, if this patient is on atropin infusion or if this patient is on atropin, uh, we should monitor for all these complications. Especially in OP person, we will be putting this patient on atropin infusion. So we should monitor for these complications in these patients. Then uh, uh, other thing is that some Times if the patient might be coming with atropin poisoning like mushroom poisoning or in case of atropin belladonna uh, uh, intake and all in such patients patient will be ha um, manifesting some symptoms like this like dryness of secretions will be there in constipation will be there uh, urine retention will be there uh, we, uh, in these conditions we will be just 
receiving supportive treatment. Uh, if this patient presents with an acute overdose in the first one hour itself, then we, we can uh, give a gastric lavage activated charcoal and all after making sure the airway is patent. Then if still this patient is having side effects, depending on the side effects, we can treat. Uh, if this patient is having arrhythmia, dangerous arrhythmias, we can manage with sodium bicarbonate. And if this patient is having uh, central nervous system complications, we, then we can plan on giving uh, physostigmine or we can plan on giving um, benzodiazepine, depending on the complications. Uh, benzodiazepine is usually indicated in case of seizure secondary to uh, overdose of anticholinergic. So, if at all this patient uh, develops a complication, we can manage that. Otherwise, uh, uh, management of atropin overdose is uh, symptomatic management only. So, uh, this is all about atropin. Uh, in the ED, it, as, I, as we told, we usually use it for symptomatic bradycardia as an anti-secretory agent and, as, uh, and in case of uh, organophosphorus or carbamate poisoning. Uh, the doses we have already mentioned and the side effects and what all things to be monitored we have already mentioned. So, uh, thank you.